Welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be proving that n times n plus 2 times 5n minus 1 times 5n plus 1 is always divisible by 24 as long as n is a natural number, that is, a positive integer. And this question is from a very old publication from 1904. <laughs> yeah, that's how old it is. And this is question 427 on that page. Well, I can't say any of the words in that picture correctly. I just want you to see where the question is from. Now, let's get into the video. So after thinking about it a little, I knew that if you had to work with 24, it was necessary to pay attention to the prime number that divides 24, which is 3. And how many times will 3 divide 24? 8 times. So only if I could show that this expression, no matter what n is, is divisible by 8 and is divisible by 3, I'll be good. So I started thinking, which one is easier to start with? And I came up with this idea that if I can show that this is always divisible by 8, no matter what n is, then I'm good. And I can work myself into showing that it's divisible by 3. I think the option of the 8 is actually easier because I can easily see it. How do I see it? Let me tell you something I know. This is a fact. I actually did not know this, but I came up with it while I was trying to figure out the answer to this. If you can establish that two numbers are, are consecutive even numbers, then their product is divisible by 8. So you just think about it. Pick any two consecutive even numbers, 2 and 4. Well, that's 2 times 4 is divisible by 8. 4 and 6, 4 times 6 is 24 is divisible by 8. 6 times 8, obviously divisible by 8. 10 times 12 is 120 divisible by 8. 12 times 14 is 168, and that's divisible by 8. So if you keep trying numbers, you'll see it. But we don't want to keep trying numbers. Let me just show you why the product of two consecutive even numbers is divisible by 8. Let's just take it this way. Let's say, let n and n plus 2, just as we have in this picture, be consecutive even numbers. We just need to know that if you multiply these two numbers, they're going to be divisible by 8. How do we know? Well, because this is even, we can write it as 2k. Remember, this is an even number, so it is 2k times, this is going to be 2k plus 2. If we multiply these two, we're going to end up with 4k squared plus 4k. Is that it? Yes. Pull out 4. What do you get? You get 4 times k squared plus k, which you can rewrite as equal to 4 times k times k plus 1. Well, the product of two consecutive numbers is always even. So there's an even, there's a two hiding here. Two consecutive numbers will always be even. So you can actually rewrite these two as 4 times 2m. Let's just say it is 2m. Well, this is, gives you 8m. So you can see that this, the product of two consecutive even numbers is 8 times some integer m. I forgot to tell you that k is an integer. Well, it's always assumed that k is an integer. k, m, are integers. And that's it. So, if only, obviously, from what I just did, if n is an even number, then n times n plus 2 is a product of two consecutive even numbers, so this is a multiple of 8, and we're good. But what if n is not an even number? Then I'll run here. Suppose n is an odd number. 
it means these two numbers will be odd numbers, so I can work with them. I gotta come here and say, five times an odd number is odd. Odd minus one makes it even, so this is even. Odd plus one is even. So these are two consecutive even numbers again, because any number minus one times the number plus one is two consecutive numbers that are both even, they have the same parity. That's what I'm just saying. So here, this would be two consecutive even numbers, and you're gonna get that this is divisible by eight. So however you view n, whether n is even or odd, these are two consecutive even numbers. So this is what I'm gonna say. Since the product of two consecutive even numbers is divisible by eight, I can say that n times n plus two is divisible by eight, if n is even. Or 5n minus one times 5n plus one is divisible by eight, because each of them is even, and therefore, if n is odd. So we're gonna say this works for even, and this works for odd. And that's it, because if n is odd, this is gonna be even, and this is gonna be even, and they're two consecutive even numbers, and we're done. So we have shown, therefore, therefore n into n plus two into 5n minus one, 5n plus 1 is divisible by 8. Now we need to show that this is divisible by 3, because if we can show it's divisible by 8 and divisible by 3, and 8 and 3 are relatively prime, then their product is also a factor. Now, you may have different ways you show it, but what I found while I was playing around with the expression is something quite interesting. So what I did, I noticed this is difference of two squares, right? Factored form. So I decided to put everything together. Okay, I was trying to actually do modular arithmetic, but I decided to change my mind because something juicier showed up. So this is gonna be n times n plus two times, if I multiply this out, I'm gonna end up with 25n squared minus one, difference of two squares. 25n squared doesn't fit the profile of being divisible by three. So definitely I have to do some modifications here because it doesn't look right. So what I'm gonna do is reduce 25 to a number that is divisible by three. So I'm gonna write 24. This is equal to n times n plus two. Remember, if I could generate the, the, the product of three consecutive numbers, it would be a multiple of three. One of them is divisible by three. We've done that before. The product of three consecutive numbers is always divisible by three, okay? Now, but I don't see that here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this as 24 n squared. And then I'm going to write this as plus n squared minus one. Mm. Mm. I already see the answer because what I see now is I see n times n plus two times 24n squared plus, this is difference of two squares, I can write it as n minus one times n plus one. Nice, nice. Now I'm gonna take this and multiply what I have here and see what it looks like. This is gonna be 24 n cubed n plus two plus this times this times this, look at what you see. It's gonna be n minus one times n times n plus one. Do you see what I see? Oh, there's something missing here. I forgot to put the n plus two. So it's gonna be n plus two. So now look at what I'm looking at. If you look at this term, can you divide this term by three? Yes, because there's a 24 sitting here. So we don't care what this is. All we know is that this is divisible by three. Is this divisible by three? Well, we don't care about this guy. Actually, we do. 
oh, this is rich in consecutive threes because if you multiply these three, because these are three consecutive numbers, it's divisible by three. And if you focus on this, it's also divisible by three. So whatever you want is available. So we know that this is divisible by three. Here, you can say it's three. And remember, from our number theory understanding, if two numbers are divisible by the same, by another number, then their sum is also divisible. Let's just put that somewhere. Um, recall? Okay, let me just put a small box here. If A divides B and A divides C, then A divides B plus or minus C. It doesn't matter what you do with the two of them, A will divide any linear combination of B and C. So that's it. Because 3 divides this and 3 divides this and 3 will divide the sum, but what is the sum of this? Well, we go all the way. This is it. It was this that we broke down. So we say, therefore, 3 divides this guy. N times N plus 2, I'm running out of space, times 5N minus 1 times 5N plus 1. So we have established two things. This part, 3 divides it. We have already established this also. 8 divides it. So because 3 and 8 are factors, 24 must also be a factor. Okay, since 3 and 8 are factors, then 24 is also a factor. It would be great for me to say, therefore, blah, 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 is divisible by 24, but there's no space. So do that for me in your mind. Okay. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.